afternoon, folks. Welcome to Vegas Views, where we stream live every Tuesday at 12 p.m. I'm your host, LG Severback, and we got our great co-host, Nicole Vegas, back. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm your co-host, Jason Velez. All right. Hey, you know what, guys? I just want to share with you. I appreciate your comments. That's about Nicole, but now she's back. So we're so excited. Welcome back, Nicole. Thank you so much. It's good to be back. And we also have a special guest, Paul Capanella, which is my favorite of yes. favorites <laughs> of any talent and acting coach. Uh, so thank you for being here today. Thank, thank you for Paul. asking me. I appreciate it. Nice to see you here, man. <laughs> this is amazing. Hey, I got like three of my favorite people in the whole world here. I met Master Jason. He turned me on the movies. I met Master Aaron, turned me on the martial arts. I met Nicole. She took care of me on sets. And Paul, just so you guys know, he's my acting coach. He's the one that brings out the silverback of the OG. He's my <laughs> acting coach, oh, he, I think, first. Yeah, you turned me Are on. Are we going to fight yeah. over this? No. <laughs> <laughs> but nice. can we um, share a little bit, too, yeah. about, uh, Paul, how I connected with you? How did we all connect with you? Uh, I think mostly through uh, referrals, people that knew me and knew you. And then uh, Facebook messaging, you know, things like that. Uh, the word gets out. And most of my clients have come usually from referrals and or from seeing my posts on Facebook, uh, success stories of actors that have really uh, worked really hard and landed roles, you know, really good roles, major motion pictures like Equalizer 2, major television shows like, um, uh, uh, what is it, the NCIS LA, and FBI International, things like that. So just word of mouth, really. And you're, you're um, having classes. How can they connect with you right now and um, start booking classes with you? Where sure. could they find you? Just go to my Facebook and send me a message, Paul X Campanella, and uh, just send me a Facebook message, and we'll uh, connect and see what we can do for you. Excellent. <laughs> And do you want to share what makes you really amazing? I'm sorry, guys. But you're not from Buffalo, <laughs> New York. <laughs> yes, I am. Are, yes. Well, me and Master Jason from New York, too. might not be Buffalo, but we yeah. can appreciate the East yes. Coast yeah. guy. Go Bills. They're up. They're really good, good this year. Um, I mean, that's sort of an odd question. That, that would have to be something you should answer, really. Uh, <laughs> you know, I just think, you know, the thing is, is that um, over the years, I've had the pleasure and the privilege of really working with really talented people's casting directors mostly, where I've helped them in workshops and I've, um, uh, you know, been their assistant, so to speak, uh, for workshops. And from that experience, I learned a lot about acting from the casting director perspective. So mm. I think some of the principles that I bring to the table, it's not necessarily, you know, when people talk about Meisner or the method or things of that nature, I sort of bring what I think is a more practical approach a more real world approach to it because a lot of it comes from the perspective of what the casting directors see mm -hmm. when they're doing auditions and, and the mistakes that actors make, you mm -hmm. know, and what you should and should not do in a given room or a given situation. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's maybe sort of this unique perspective that that um, I don't know that many people really have, you know what I mean, because of that experience that I had with people like Sherry Rhodes as an example, mm -hmm. who was the location casting director for Breaking Bad in Albuquerque. Uh, we had her here a couple times in Vegas, and then also Rick Pagano and Russell Boast, uh, tremendous casting directors with huge resumes, huge projects, like the television show 24. You know, that's what they cast. Mm -hmm. And um, so bringing them here for a four week intensive workshop, working with them, learning from them, seeing that perspective, uh, it's very different, very unique. Mm -hmm. Well, just to piggyback on that, folks, I had the benefit of learning Paul's methods. And just so Paul knows, this is the first time I'm telling him on camera, I study him with Paul once a week, but to prepare for roles, I used to go to Master Jason's house. We used to use the Paul Campanella method to prepare for roles. Yes. <laughs> Great. And How did it work out? I had to bring out the bamboo staff. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's what I couldn't do in class. <laughs> well, I landed a couple of roles that actually I got more speaking parts because you brought out the best in my character. You know, thank you for referring Paul to me. Nicole was always like, oh, gee, you're awesome, but you need to go see Paul. He'll help you with your acting it's, skills. It's, it's anybody um, because you're really strategic. And yes. you know how to um, help somebody build their character arc and what to look out for 
and what you taught is never get caught acting. Right. Yep. Yeah, exactly. that's, that's what seeks in my head, never get caught acting. Right. Um, you, you bring so much to um, Vegas, not just with uh, being an acting coach, but a performer, which I got to see you at the Italian American Club, and I was I was blown away. Me too. Just I was so blown talented away. Yeah. Uh, with your performance. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, a lot of that goes to the band. They're just a tremendous group of musicians, and uh, we're going to be doing another one uh, Sunday, October 30th. So, um, and there's three options. You ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Option number one, you get the show ticket, which gives you the show and the buffet. Okay. Option number two is going to dinner in the restaurant at the Italian American Club, then coming to the show. So that's a show only ticket. Mm -hmm. Or if you're going to have dinner somewhere else, then you can just come to the show as well. So, uh, yeah, call the Italian American Club. It's Sunday, October 30th. The show was called from, or the show you saw was called From Memphis to Motown. This one is called From Memphis to Motown and More. So we're gonna, we've, we've heightened it up a little bit. We've uh, jacked it up. Same band, great players. Um, we've got three, three musicians that, and performers that worked with Michael Grimm mm -hmm. over the years, the America's Got Talent winner. So that's Bruce Wallace on keys, Joe Escriba on the sax. Nikki Logan on vocals, mm -hmm. and then I've got the uh, tremendous Donnie Castleman on the bass, who was Terry Fader's uh, bass player in his band when he was at the Mirage for mm -hmm. all those years. So it's a fantastic band. It's a great room. You guys were in the room. Yes, oh, yes, yes. How'd you like the food? Oh, it was amazing. Everything, everything. Wow. Uh, you covered everything. Yeah. It, it was the entertainment, the ambiance, the good energy, too. I mean, everybody was up and dancing. Yeah. I mean, you made yes. that room happen with a... Uh, <laughs> Wanting to get up and dance, which I would never usually do. I just usually sit there, but it, it was great. It was a great experience. So I'm looking forward to getting a ticket and seeing you again at the end of October. Awesome. Yes. yes. Sunday, it's, October 30th. Yeah. And speaking of the singing, folks, me and Master Jason, we were blown away because not only Paul can sing and carry a tune, he plays an instrument, but he's a comedian, man. Yeah. This dude was <laughs> so funny, right, yes. Master Jason? Yes. <laughs> Well, we try to improvise, which I teach in class. Yes, right? you do. Oh, improv. Um, so, yeah, we have fun with it. Uh, and sometimes it's just um, things that happen randomly. You know, you just have to react to what the audience is doing and things like that. So, uh, so that's fun. But you do so, I couldn't believe it when I, I only known you as an acting coach. And then right, when you introduced to me that you have this other talent, multi-talented, multi multi-talented. Yeah. Multi because um, I, I got to work with that, James DeBall. Yes. And he also is multi. He sings. And he, I was like, Paul Capanella. I don't know if you know him. <laughs> <laughs> I said it, it must be something with the talents of the people that know how to excel. They just uh, they're just really good with range of yeah. uh, different skill sets. Right, right. It's really mm -hmm. amazing that you have all these skill sets and that you also bring it to the class. So other people, if they have it, they can develop it too and yeah. work on their craft and their skills. And it's really mm -hmm. imperative to have somebody that's. Um, multi-talented that has that background in mm -hmm. acting and also is able to bring it as an acting coach so there is uh, the group which you keep small yes. so they're not getting washed out I, that's yeah, what yeah. I love about coming back to you because you have uh, how many how many is usually it's 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 usually somewhere between eight and ten your yep. class I, yep. I don't like to go more than that because that way everybody gets attention mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and Master Jason you might you may feel the same way when you're teaching martial right. arts to yeah. a group you know it's Tough to do that with 25 or 30 people in the room. Absolutely. You know, and give them the individual attention, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we try to keep it small and intimate. Uh, so everybody, and and I and uh, I don't like long classes. I've been in <laughs> classes where, God, four and a half hours, and it's like, what? You know, uh, we try and keep ours two hours, maybe max, yeah, maybe yeah. a little over two hours. I have a saying, it's be brief, be bright. And be gone. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Like three B's. Yes. <laughs> exactly. The three well, B's. But speaking of intimate classes, I want to share something with you guys. I've just been in Vegas for about a year and a half. Oh, and yeah. thanks to Master Jason Nicole, my career's taken off. I mean, I'm not a superstar, but I'm working. But I got to share this with you. I went to an acting school and there was a lot of people there. And I learned the basic, you know, I learned about the different methods, character stuff, and improv. And it wasn't until Nicole and then, uh, the, the buff dude, George Funderburg, he, he got on me on set. He said, you got to listen to Cole, go see Paul. So I went to see Paul. The intimacy part is very important because Paul looks at each student and he brings out your strengths. He tells you what your weaknesses are, what you can work on, but then he tells you what your strengths are and he helps you to, to really bring that out. And I think that's very helpful in this Challenges career. Challenges you doesn't just yeah. like say, oh, that was good. No, this is the way you can do it better. Do it better. So, oh, my goodness. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
you know, the thing is, you, when you go into an audition or you meet casting director, um, we're being evaluated. We're in this business of being judged all the time. And there's certain parameters that you just have to fit into that, that um, display professionalism, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You go in, you're prepared, right? You go in, you get out, be brief, be bright, and be gone. <laughs> you know? right, right. And I have a, a favorite saying that I always tell my, my, my good buddy, Jay Haran, who, who was uh, one of my first clients uh, that I've worked with over the years and still do after about 10 years. I always tell him, I said, go into the room, and when you leave, you know, hopefully they say, who was that masked man? Mm. You know, because the you know they've never seen you before, but you you want to make an impression, and the impression is is that you're professional, and you've also brought. It's not only that you brought the um, what was on the page to life, but you also brought something different to it, something mm -hmm. fresh <clears throat> that nobody else in the room did. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what we try and emphasize uh, within the system that that we work with. Nice. And emphasize how many people audition for one part. Oh, it could literally be thousands. I mean, today we're in a global competition. Right, right, okay? yeah. Because with the advent of self-tapes, um, it's literally a global competition. You could get 20,000 submissions for a role. You know, like let's say something like a Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where they're literally casting globally. Uh, they're casting from South Africa, from America, from Britain, from Croatia, you know, because they film there. Wow. Um, who knows what they're, you know, they could be casting from Thailand or Australia, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's a global competition. So that's why it's important, especially with the advent of the self-tape scenario, which I was lucky enough to be a part of the, the first wave of that happening or back around probably 2008 mm -hmm. uh, when that started to happen. Um, and casting directors really didn't like it for a long time, you know. But mm -hmm. I think, sadly, but maybe not, because of COVID, that really forced everybody to go that route. Mm -hmm. And now they're sort of seeing the benefits of it, uh, where they can view tapes at their own leisure. Yep. You know, uh, They can go through more tapes quicker. Mm -hmm. um, and then if they want to meet the actor in person, they can always do a callback in the room mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. do that and get a feel for um, the personality of the person and what they're like, the vibe that they give off, right. you know, all that stuff. So Paul, how important it is for someone especially when they're new to take acting classes, to take martial arts, to build those skills. How mm -hmm. important is that? Well, the more skill sets you have, right, um, the more likely or the, the better chance you have of, of getting booked in a variety of scenarios, okay? Mm -hmm. So we can talk about martial arts. We can talk about stunts. We can talk about things like uh, horseback riding, right? Because uh, obviously that's important for a lot of genres today. Um, not only just a western, but again, all those Game of Thrones type things. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. You know, a lot of that medieval stuff is really popular, <laughs> and uh, that requires certain skills, sword fighting, whatever that might be. Weapon um, training. Yep. Weapons training, yep, yep. definitely. Um, there's nothing that I think <laughs> that aggravates me more than seeing uh, someone poorly handle a weapon oh, yeah. on oh screen. Gosh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's like, I, oh, it's just terrible. I think all of us here yeah. would... Um, yes. <laughs> Brown, when there is uh, somebody on set that doesn't should know the the proper gun protocol and right. the gun safety, and you treat every weapon like it's loaded, it's and right. uh, you don't muzzle people, which means you don't point the the gun at anybody or at any them, time. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 yeah, and that's one of Jason's pet peeves. Like when we're on set together, he makes mm -hmm. sure you can handle the weapons properly. Yeah, yeah, we're doing it uh, at the start of every uh, stunt class now. Right, just like warm up. Right. We're, we're going over firearm safety on set and so forth. Good. And and what's your stunt class called, and how can somebody connect to that? Okay, so uh, we're at Nak Muay Thai. Our, our group is called Vegas Empire Stunts, and we train there uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Nice. So when somebody's in acting class, Paul can always refer them because yep. if Absolutely. they want to build their skills that way, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sometimes when they go to stunts, they never took acting classes, right. and it's right. building yeah. that community together so they get the proper training. Well, and an example of a really successful blend of that is Jay Haran. Mm -hmm. Jay, came, Jay came through the, uh, the fight game, right? He was a UFC fighter, MMA. Mm -hmm. uh, started, started to um, slowly move out of that, move into retirement. Yeah. And in doing so, uh, his good buddy, Randy Couture, uh, got him into stunts, you know, got him some connections with the stunt world. Jay started doing stunts. And then little by little, he got more interested in acting. Uh, we got together. 
I was actually uh, in the middle of finishing writing a screenplay and wanted Jay and another fighter, Mike Pyle, to possibly be in this project if it was going to get produced. So that's when I met them. And then uh, Jay uh, started to come to me for coaching for these auditions because, as you might know, Jason, some stunt people, they don't want to have nothing to do with talking on camera. Yes. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me yeah. shoot the stunt and get out of here. <laughs> right. yeah. uh, but, you know, if, if you can have that, um, that double whammy, so to speak, with Jay, of he can do the stunt and he can act, yes. right? Now you've got a two for one. Mm -hmm. And that's what won him his role in Equalizer 2 with Denzel Washington. Nice. He spent 10 days on set with Denzel, just him and Denzel in a car. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> you know? yeah. And working with Antoine Fuqua, right. who then brought him back to do more stunt work uh, in uh, The Terminal List. That's amazing. now on Amazon Prime. That's amazing. So it all snowballs, right? Yeah. So the, like you say, the more skills you have, uh, the better you can possibly compete. Um, and, and also, think about it, you're saving production money. Yep. Mm -hmm. And time. Being yep. an asset instead of a liability. Exactly. An mm -hmm. asset. So is instead of hiring a stunt guy to do the stunts of the actor who's speaking the lines, they can, they can do it. Got it all in one. Yeah. But speaking of all in one, Paul, I wanted to share this with you. So when I initially came to Paul's class, I was more of a stunt guy. I mean, I took some acting, but Paul brought out my talents, and I wanted to share with you what I like about your class. Paul would have you shoot a scene, and then he goes, okay, this time can you shoot it angry, or can you shoot it happy, or can you shoot a little different? And I, I thought, I was like, why is he doing this? But then I, I did a scene with Joe Lujan. I just did a movie with him. I can't tell you the name of it. And he hired me to do stunts. And he goes, hey, can you read this script right here? And I read it. Guess what he said to me, guys? Guess what he said, Paul? Hey, can you read a little bit more angry? And I thought, no. I thought about Paul. I was like, that's what Paul said. And then he said, hey, can you do a little bit angry but less uh, intense? Yeah. And I was like, Paul's a genius. <laughs> no, not really. It came in handy. Well, that's good. It was crazy. Because yeah. if you didn't go to him, I wouldn't have known. I'd have been assets. like, what are you talking been, about? You, but it would have been scrambling. But then you went back to what Paul yeah. taught you in his class. That's so imperative. Yeah. So he wasn't wasting his time that nope. you can't do this, you can't do this. Oh, my. You know, right. And it was very helpful. Easy. Thank yeah. you, Paul. It's a redirect. And that's one of the things that we do in class is we work with actors on you know, showing them how to redo a scene or do a scene differently because... Going back to the fact that we have these taped auditions now, more and more we're seeing them ask for two to three different takes of a scene. Yes. So they actually want you to submit mm -hmm. two or three different takes. Wow. Because they're not in the room with you to do a redirect. Right, right, right. You know? yeah. So it, it, it's, it comes in handy to be able to flip that switch <laughs> and, and turn the scene around in a way that's very different. Even if it's just so that they can see that you can do it. Right, yeah. It's not necessarily what they want, right? Right, right, right. But as long as they know that you can be redirected or yep. be creative in that way. And you have a range. Uh, and you have a range, right, yeah, exactly, yeah. for yeah. that. Then uh, then they're happy. Then they, you know, They're more than willing to uh, take a look at that. Well, speaking of ranges, guys, i got to share this with you. So when I saw you at the Italian American Club, like, Paul's my acting coach, right? And I know the guy can act. You know, he's a working actor. But I didn't know the dude could sing and play play guitar, and it was a comedian. And I came to class the next week after, and I was like, wow, man, you remind me of Fred Astaire, them old school actors that can sing and dance and play instruments. Let me know, the forgotten art. And if you look up Paul Capanilla on uh, IMDb, mm -hmm. It is in your bio, Triple yeah. Threat. Oh. You, you have what it takes. You've done it. You've showed mm -hmm. it. You've taught it. And you applied it multiple times, and mm. that's and you are very credible because you, yeah. you you say what you mean and you you mean what you say. You 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 don't um, dance around things. You're very straightforward, um, yep. very professional, and that's why I keep going back and I, I I have to share who you are and what you're about because there's not that many um, that I uh, trust in or believe in or take the time to actually teach the the right way. And, and there's different methods, and mm -hmm. you're really good with. Um, Installing uh, good acting techniques. Yep. Yes. Yep. Thank you. I appreciate that. So I'll take the award now and take off. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> and you'll all get a check in the mail. Oh. <laughs> no, this is not paid, guys, because you know what's funny? Whenever I get a script now, Paul, do your breakdown method. Like, Paul has this scene breakdown method, you know what I mean? Beginning, middle, end, all this stuff. And, and Paul's in my head, like, okay, and what does the character want? And what do you want? And I'm like, wow. So you, and you're the history. Really, yeah, the history. Do they have a history or do you have to make up your own history? Right. And yeah. there's um, 
just uh, like the Ritz Carlton. I don't know what that was. I was like, yeah, you, you just make uh, people and the students take a step back to reevaluate. It's not just what you see on paper. It's really depicting each sense, mm -hmm. each word. Right. Um, sometimes the words are capitalized, and I can see it now when I see a script. I'm like, that is more emphasis. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah, you yeah. just teach so much. So. Well, one of the things that we try and work with is to work with actors on understanding the scenes or script from the writer's perspective. Mm -hmm. Because in today's world, um, especially television, the writer is the showrunner. You know, they're the creator, they're the showrunner. People like Shonda Rhimes and Vince Gilligan from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Um, so it's important to understand that, and you can only understand that if you really dive into the text and really understand the text and everything about it, uh, including not just the dialogue, but all of the action lines, um, the scene headings, which tells you where you are, right? Yep. The action lines, which tells you what you're doing. And sometimes it's very obvious how they want a scene played, you know, because they just tell you. OG walks in angry. Well, okay, we know our opening emotion is angry. You know, he's not going to come in smiling, right? So we, and, and so many times that gets overlooked. It's, it's actually pretty funny when I see it in class. It happened last week where an actor just totally didn't see that it literally was written in front of them. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. it was right there. And we had a good laugh about it, but now she understands, right? That, okay, so sometimes it's right there in front of you. So it's important to understand it from the writer's perspective. And then, but at the same time, put your own twist to it. You know, mm -hmm. put your own style, the way you deliver, the way you speak, the way you emphasize something, the way you take a moment, you know, which can be very uh, useful to build tension. Right, right. right. It's not just talking all the time like I am right now. No, we like it so far. We like it. This is you're about the special you. Guest. Yes, um, and everybody needs to know. Right. I feel um, when they're like, "Oh, I'm new. I don't know where to go. I don't know who." I think these three men right here um, are absolutely phenomenal with integrity and uh, professionalism, and they have the skills to help you um, get to where you need to go if you're going to put it in your work as well. One thing I can say for sure, though, Paul, you and Jason have a, a similar background like when we're doing martial arts movie fight scenes mm -hmm. they'll have me research martial arts movies you know hey this is the kind of role we're going to play this kind of fight okay. scene yeah and no you did that a lot because you gave us a couple of scenes in class you go hey go watch the television series go watch the movies so right. you can have a reference point i think that's very helpful yeah. oh especially if you're auditioning for a particular yeah. show right yeah. it's important to understand every show has a rhythm so you need to understand that rhythm because you can go in and give a great audition but it might be the wrong audition, <laughs> right? Yes. Which, which they could, you know, you walk out of the room and casting goes, well, you know, she was really good, but she's never seen the show, right? Right. Oh. You know, and it's that type of thing. You need to understand that there's a rhythm. Uh, the shows like Suits, as an example, there's a, there's a sense of humor in that show that mm -hmm. if you don't lock into it and right. you're reading the script, you will totally miss a joke, mm -hmm. right? That, yes. That's there that you should have played that you totally didn't get. Right. So the research is important. I have to ask Nicole something. Oh no, not not in front of everybody. Yeah, I do. Is this a break time? What's it, what's it, a what's it like? <laughs> <laughs> what's it like sitting with three bald guys? I, mean, I know. Yeah. Good thing I didn't have to fit in today. <laughs> <laughs> like some of like, like oh, I, I missed it. I could have. Oh, uh, I did have the offer to um, shave my head for some uh, cause, but say, you didn't get the memo. <laughs> You're a bald I didn't. Guy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but next time, maybe I can. Um, well, as oh, long as the see. light's not glaring off too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny though. Yeah. It's a good bounce. Yeah, when well, she <laughs> bounces and us out like Paul said. I'm kind of looking now to see how it all looks out there. Yep, I just saw you take the hat off and uh. But I'm, you know, maybe I'm gonna do something on live TV that's very rarely done. Uh -oh. Okay. I'm shutting my phone nervous. off. Is it oh, good? shut this phone off. Okay. <laughs> that is rarely done, folks. I was wondering who it was. I thought it was yeah. yours. No, 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 never. Oh, not me, no. Yeah. I know how Maria flow. That's shut my oh, yeah. phone off before I come in the set. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did too, I think. So okay, is it about so, that time? Yeah. Too, so really you know, speaking break. of shut my phone off, folks, we're gonna take a commercial break, and we'll come back in two minutes or so. Take care. All right. <laughs> Thank you.
Hello, everyone. This is Joseph Skoda with Social Media Shows. Well, I thank all of you for your support through these last several years, and it's been a lot of fun. We've given people a voice they never had before. Now, Social Media Shows is always collaborating with our veterans to help them do things and help out the veterans who are struggling today. And we teamed up with GI Connections, GI Connections, connecting veterans with resources. So please consider helping and donating to this great cause because we're always doing things for veterans. So GI Connections, social media shows, and you is what makes the world a better place. Once again, Joseph Skoda, proud United States Air Force veteran. Hello, everyone. This is Joseph. Welcome to Social Media Shows. Have you been watching social media shows recently? Of course you have. We have been live streaming for four years across social media platforms. We produce over 70 shows with over 1,000 episodes. In the process, we've helped over 100 creators realize their dreams and start their own show. We give platforms to promote your business. If you are an artist, if you have an event, if you are entrepreneurs, or if you have a story. If you haven't done it yet, go ahead and subscribe and follow us on major social media platforms. And if you have a great idea of a show, join us. Social media shows can help you produce and live stream your own show. Let us help you make your dream become a reality. Traditional TV is going away. Hollywood is starting to fade. People are demanding real stories from real people. Our voices are now being heard in our own way. Podcasts, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok Live are becoming the norm. Internet TV has now reached the highest demand in human history. Social Media Shows is now the new media of the century. Norm. Internet TV has now reached the highest demand in human history. Social Media Shows is now the new media of the century. Traditional TV is going away. Hollywood is starting to fade. People are demanding real stories from real people. Welcome to Social Media Shows. Have you been watching social media shows recently? Of course you have. We have been live streaming for four years across social media platforms. We produce over 70 shows with over 1,000 episodes. In the process, we've helped over 100 creators realize their dreams. Hello, folks, and welcome back to Vegas Views, where we stream every Tuesday at 12 p.m. And hey, guys, I want to pick up where we left off with our awesome guest, Paul Campanella. Hey, Paul, I had a question for you. We were so busy talking about your talents as an acting coach and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to talk to you about how you got into singing, you know what I mean? Because I just wanted to understand what got you into that. Uh, well, I came from a musical family. Oh. Uh, my mother was a choir director. She, uh, I believe, had a degree in music. I'm not exactly sure, but I know she went to college for it. So she was a choir director, uh, played piano and uh, church organ. And when I was six years old, I joined the kids' choir. Nice. And then she promptly kicked me out because I was too loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, I just grew up with music in the house. My dad was a singer as well. Wow. He was a tenor. And um, my brother started playing jazz organ, Hammond B3, uh, around the house. And his friend came over and brought a set of drums. So the actual first instrument that I played were drums. Wow. And, um, Interesting. And then, of course, there was a famous date, February 9th. 1964, uh, when these four guys from England 
came on television. Oh, yeah, and yeah. And changed the world. Yes. You know? And if you ask any musician my age, they'll pretty probably tell you the same story, you know, that they saw that and that was it. They said, I want to do that. Yep. <laughs> yep. So we uh, got an old cheap acoustic guitar that was practically impossible to play because the action was this high. You, know, mm -hmm. you needed, a, you needed a, one of those string things to, to get the strings down. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just started to play and sing. And, and then as a young teenager, got into bands. Nice. Know, played... Uh, Dances, high school, stuff like that. But my first professional gig, well, it wasn't professional. My first gig, we didn't get paid, was when I was in eighth grade. One of the nuns, Sister Mary Veronica, was going to have a benefit for Catholic charities. So she said, you guys are playing. And we went, okay. <laughs> so we had this little four or five piece band when we were kids, and we played in the school hall. And uh, raise money for Catholic charities, and that nice. was it. And that nice. was the start. So you nice. have performed for over a quarter of a million people. So far? Yes, easily Be between. Uh, well, a lot of that uh, was anthems. I, d I had done the anthem at a few major events. Um, HBO Night of the Young Heavyweights. Um, also, we, my son and I, did the anthem here a few years back at Mandalay Bay uh, with the WNBA team, and mm -hmm. we did it. Together on Father's Day, wow. nice. That's special. Yeah. so that was cool. That was really cool. So yeah, so that and then between the tours and all the clubs I've worked and, and uh, all that stuff, yeah, easily a quarter of a million, if not more. So I know people ask me, but do you sleep? I try. I try as hell, you know, yes. hell is to get some sleep. Yeah. No, nah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's slowed down quite a bit, so. Uh, I only perform a couple times a year doing the show that mm -hmm. you saw. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hopefully we can pick it up though. Um, I had that residency at Mandalay Bay at the House of Blues nice. for three years, and wow. we're hoping that'll come back soon. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see. I had a professional yeah. question for you, Paul. Do you feel that being a singer, do you feel that helps your acting, or? Well, I think the music background helps in okay. the sense that you can get you can get a feel for the rhythm of a scene. Okay, so there's a rhythm to every scene. Every writer has a rhythm in the way they write. Okay, mm -hmm. so Quentin Tarantino is different from David Mamet. Okay, um, and Aaron Sorkin and those types of writers and Vince Gilligan. So there's a rhythm there. So mm -hmm. if you have that musical background, I think maybe you have a little bit of an advantage going into that understanding the nature of rhythm. Right, okay. Right? okay. And the other part of it too is we do an exercise in class. I don't know if we had a chance to do it when you guys were in. Um, where I'll ask an actor, okay, when you prepare this scene, after you know the scene, after you get it all done, after you're totally confident with it, what would you think would be a great song to hear behind oh, that scene? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, imagine your own soundtrack to the scene. Right. And then how does that change how you perform the scene? You know? Fascinating. Because mm -hmm. music changes the brain. You know, it really does. It changes the brain, brain chemistry. So it, it, if you can hear that song, if you can hear that music, you know, as the score, you know, behind the scene, yeah. then how does that change it? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's why I went along too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's like third grade recorder at that end. It was the worst recorder ever. I couldn't. So there might, there has to be an advantage. Because like, I see yeah. the, the actors or the actresses, the talent they have, and it very reminds me of, you can perform. I can't sing and I can't play anything. But you and can I've dance? Like, no. No, you can't dance? No, I thought you were no. dancing I in my know. show. Yeah. Yes, you were. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Two yeah. left feet or something. There was something. It looked like I was probably falling. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, no, by the way, he was moving her. Did everyone see Nicole on CSI? I For saw her. I didn't get to watch it. I know. It was, it was like literally like this. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Like, at least I made it because the first season I didn't get to. I, and I was telling everybody because I was with Murray the Magician, which he's. Can I share it? He has a Netflix show that I was on. Right. He doesn't air it yet, but I met him, and I thought we, you know, just because the camera's on you doesn't mean, doesn't mean you're going to be seen at all. I was right, like, right, what right, is yeah. this? I yeah, told yeah. everybody I was so embarrassed. <laughs> right, I'm like, right. well, I have a picture to prove I was there. It's on CSI <laughs> website, right there. I yeah, was there. At least right. I was there. Yeah. But you don't know until. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you won't know unless you get the the principal roles, and I didn't know right, the difference yeah. when I started between background or extras, principal yeah. roles, uh, feature, uh, cameos, yeah, supporting. Lead. Lead. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot to learn. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I went in, I thought I just, you had my first audition 
a first recording of uh, whatever I did. It was the worst one ever. Can I have that back? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. It was so, it was really bad. Um, so I think about that in the back of my mind. Like, you could expose that. Don't, don't expose that. <laughs> hey, but speaking of which, folks, I wanted to share this with you. Paul also, I don't know if you remember this, Paul. Paul tells you about the business aspect of, you know, being in this career. He's not about acting. He tells you about contracts, all kind of stuff, you know, presentation. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that about you. Right off. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, things yeah. like that. But, I mean, talk to your tax accountant for the right offs <laughs> <laughs> But, um, no, it's important to understand some of the, the nature of the business so that you don't get taken advantage of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because it's easy to get taken advantage of in this business. The same mm -hmm. thing in the music business, you know, for years. You know, it was like, <laughs> I, kept, I just saw an interview with somebody, and they were saying how... Uh, they were talking to their record label. This was years ago, and the record label says, "Well, yeah, you owe us uh, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars." And they're like, "Wait a minute! You just told us we made you a million dollars. How do we owe you one hundred and fifty thousand? Mm -hmm. All this creative accounting." Mm -hmm. There's oh, all yeah. cards and scams yeah. with yeah. any industry yeah. Yeah. that people mm -hmm. aren't aware until uh, too little, too late, unless they can actually go to somebody they can trust. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and that part's really hard. I've been struggling mm -hmm. with that too because there's a lot of phony balonies. And um, <laughs> yeah. even if you do everything right on your end, right, right. they're going to do yeah. right on their end. I was like, wait yeah. a minute, what is, what's happening yeah. here? Uh, so yeah. it's really important to be able to trust uh, a, a small handful, like a list. You know how they have yes. that list on Facebook? That met, Yeah, that's the list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, so yeah, especially if you're investing money in something, yes. right? right yeah. If you're putting I, I, money into yeah. something, you really need to understand the nature of how the accounting goes and mm -hmm. what the definitions of these terms are and things right, of that. Right. So it's important to protect yourself. And even if some of them films doesn't mean they, they ever get distributed or finished. Exactly. Just because they film it doesn't yeah. mean it's ever going to come to see the light of day. So there's a right. lot of uh, Well, that's around. one of the reasons I, I sort of transitioned part of what I do into... Filming reels, which you've done with yes, um, because people wait for their footage from independent films mm -hmm. uh, yes. that they never see. Never like my seen. first two films that I did here in Vegas, the first film didn't come out for three years, the second film didn't come out for almost five years. Wow! Because of post production problems, they ran mm -hmm. out of money, they had bad audio, things of that nature, and I never saw my footage. You know, okay. never got it. So part of the reason for doing custom reels for actors was so that you have footage because going back to the marketing part of it, you need that. You need to have yourself on camera doing a scene, mm -hmm. you know, professionally done, well lit, mm -hmm. um, a good script, just even if it's 25 seconds because that's all the casting director needs. And you need to have that along with great headshots, right, yep. because yep. those are your marketing tools. And you gave me, you referred to me as someone really good. Olga. Olga, Olga, Olga. Yes. 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 because she is phenomenal yes. at what she does. So thank you, and, and it is. It's it's who you know, right. what you know, and how do you apply it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to ask Paul about yeah. uh, your martial arts background okay, sure. and how you apply that to acting and, and other parts of your life. Uh, I've always been. I've always loved the martial arts. I was always a huge fan of Bruce Lee from the time he was doing Kato. Yes. Yeah, me know, too. All that, um, and of course, when Enter the Dragon came out, that was that was like the Beatles of martial arts. Yeah, movies, yeah, you know? exactly. Um, and it was just phenomenal to see that um, thing just grow and grow and grow. Um, I studied a little bit of Tai Chi and Aikido. Nice. Uh, so just. Just didn't get belted or anything. It was right, just right. private sessions with one guy who actually taught both. Okay. And uh, just learned some of the basic things and that. Because mm -hmm. I've always, again, been fascinated with it. Mm -hmm. And then every once in a while, I would, I'd go to the gym with uh, Jay, you know, yeah. and, and we'd mess around <laughs> and he'd get me working out on the bag and stuff like that. So um, it, it's, it's helped me have an understanding of doing some stunts and some safety stuff on set as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll just tell you one quick story about a stunt. That almost went wrong. Um, we had set up some crash pads. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to literally run across, grab a guy, and like sort of tackle him off camera. Right. So you would see me, he'd be standing, you'd see me come in, tackle him, and we'd go, both go off camera mm -hmm. and land on these crash pads. And they stacked them up nice and high, which was good because they were off camera. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want to fall too far, you know. And we all got that all set up. Went in the back, getting ready for the camera and the lighting to get done. We come back out, 
And the director had ordered somebody to take one of the crash pads off. Oh, man. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like looking down now at this <laughs> low crash <laughs> pad. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm going to break my neck. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so we refused to do the scene until we got that second crash Okay, pad safety pad. first. Yeah. 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 And the stunt coordinator even was like, what's going on? Right. You know? right. Yeah. I had two yeah. crash pads there for a reason. Right. You know? Right. So we, but we wound up doing it, and it looked great on camera when we did it. Yeah. And once that thing was finally done. And everybody made but. it out without breaking a neck. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So Thank when goodness. you taught me safety first, I think you taught me too safety mm -hmm. first. You're yeah. your own safety. Yep. You have to have your because if someone put they do will push you on sets. I've oh, had definitely. It on me my too. Seat. Yeah. I've yeah. had it happen. Me too. Um, yeah. and you have to stick up for yourself, yeah. and you have to because guess what? They'll replace you, and yeah. you'll be with a broken oh. neck, and yeah. you're done. Yeah, you'll be done. You're yeah. you're the executive in charge of your own protection detail. Yes. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Yes. So, it's like said. they say in the ring, protect yourself at all times. Yep. Yep. <laughs> exactly. That's and don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to stand up uh, and speak up, you know, and say, hey, no, this is wrong. You exactly. know, can't do that. Whatever it is. And just refuse to do it until they fix it. Because, you know, God forbid something really bad happened, like right. on the set of Rust. You know, oh, yeah. you know, somebody did something wrong. Somebody didn't check something. Somebody put their finger on a trigger that shouldn't have been there. Right. And um, so it's you've got to really protect yourself. Yeah. That happened on a set as well with me where I was having to fire a gun. It was blanks. And we were in a room. And the room was very dark. I was on a platform where a desk was. It was in a mansion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, sitting there, and I had to bring the gun up, and the camera was going to be on the gun. There was nobody in front of me. But way in the corner, maybe 15 feet away, there was a group person just sitting in one of the chairs. So as soon as I put the gun up, I, w I said cut, which he's not supposed to do, but I went, <laughs> cut. And he, and he goes, what? What's going on here? And I said, the guy's right there. I can get him out of my Yeah, head. he's in my line of yeah. sight. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want anybody oh, at all in right. that area, even if it's a blank. Yeah. Because you never know if there's a little piece of debris that could be stuck in the barrel. Exactly. Boom, somebody's eye. Oh. Well, even if it is a fake gun prop and they are mishandling it, Maybe next time they're handed something that's not fake, right. and yeah. they're mishandling because they never were corrected, <clears throat> and uh, the director or the crew didn't care enough to say, mm -hmm. "Hey." Exactly. Because I had that happen on a set with yeah. a knucklehead, and he uh, still said, "Can you not muzzle us?" I said, "If you don't know what that means, that means don't point it." The one actor who ran off, he was having a panic attack, and he joked around and still did it. Oh. So I didn't go back on that set. I was so upset. I I wrote out why I was upset, and. I, I know they cleared something, but they didn't seem. I, I couldn't tell if it was real or not. It's still, regardless, you don't point it to anybody. No, right, right. Um, Never, so if there's ever. a knucklehead, I can't work with that person yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. No, you got to, you got to, yeah. That's that yeah. just that indicates something that you got to, you got to do something. You got to get out of there. Yeah. And just to add, uh, okay. And then there's Murphy's Law. Yep, oh, exactly. Can you share the story that uh, Jay Haran or? Oh, oh. Yeah. I don't know if I can. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Share it off camera. Just yeah. Yeah. But just to piggyback on what we're saying about safety, guys, it's very important, even though they have the safety guy, when you do sets and they hand you a weapon, they clear it in front of everybody, you second clear it yourself, mm -hmm. and then you never give your weapon to anyone else other than the person that gave it to you. Right. You, and you always have to practice safety because you're responsible for what happens if you have a weapon. Mm -hmm. In your possession. Yep. And yep. you should know the difference too between a prop or a prop master, right? That's the person who handles props, but then there's the armorer mm -hmm. who handles actual weapons. Yes. Right? And it and again the, the if it's an if it's an armorer handling a weapon, then the firearm goes from the armorer to you. Yep. And you to the armor, maybe once in a while it might go to the AD, mm -hmm. you know, and back. But the bottom line is nobody touches it except the armor and the actor. And yeah. it should be cleared and at all. You have it, you're not pointing it in any direction. Exactly. Thus, it's directed yeah. that you have to, and that should be right. clear of anybody to where if the muzzle is not pointing at anybody. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. Even when you do like old westerns and you do like a shootout scene, if I'm you know 15, 20 feet away from the guy we're having a shootout. You're going to move that gun offline because mm -hmm. the right, camera yeah. can't see that. Exactly. Yeah. So that gun should be offline into an open area, you know. Yeah. So. And to learn more about that, folks, I want to share this with you. If you want to really get into your acting career, I suggest you go over to Vegas Empire Stunts at Nak Muay Thai off of Hacienda because daily in the classes, they teach you safety with weapons on set, the safety protocol, and how to handle weapons properly. And I think it's very good for you to have that because once you go on set, the producer and director know that you are a professional. That's right. Yeah. 
And it's important to know that one size doesn't fit all. Safety for a revolver okay. is going to be different from a semi-automatic yeah. to a Western gun. Western guns are very different. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, yeah. um, so it's it's if you depending on what you're going to do with it, uh, what the genre is of the film, whatever it is, it's important to know that. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So they need to take some acting classes <laughs> where you can help uh, them uh, learn their craft, right? Uh, and if they want to build skills too. Yep. And um, learn some fighting techniques and yep. gun safety and all that. I think it's, it's, this is a, thank you so much for having uh, this show where people can mm -hmm. reach out and get good information and also be able to connect to the resources they need in the acting industry. Very imperative. Well, thanks for having me. I, I really uh, appreciate it. <laughs> but I am looking forward to seeing you, Paul. Oh, yeah. At the yeah. Italian American Club yes. coming up. Yes. Sunday, yes. October 30th. Um, yeah. yes. All right. Uh, call the Italian American Club, make your reservations, make sure that if you're coming with a few different people, Make sure that you ask them to make sure that you're all seated at the same table. Okay. All right, so that you can make sure you're together and, and doing that. But it'll be fun. It's going to be a fun night. And then we'll have an after party. Oh, nice. Yeah. After that in the lounge. Okay. Nice. So I better slow my pace to make sure I can handle that after. I never do after parties. So I'm kind of one of those like, oh, that's past my bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in party, folks, I just wanted to thank Paul for coming here. Paul was very awesome. Wanted to welcome Nicole back and having Maester Jason here. And uh, I want you guys to stay tuned for Vegas Views every Tuesday at 12 p.m. And until next time, take care of yourself and always live your best life. Bye. I'm going to do my big heart. <laughs>